everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today's a fun video because I actually have officially finished my first year of university. I had my last exam two days ago and I'm actually packing up all my stuff tomorrow and going home in a couple of days. So about a week ago I asked um, you guys on YouTube and on Instagram if you had any questions about McGill and my first year here in Montreal. And I actually got a lot of questions so I'm going to do my best to answer as many as I can. Um, first I'm going to start with the questions that I received on Instagram. I got a lot of questions about how hard it is to get a job without speaking French and about French in general. Um, French is really helpful here uh, because it is the, like, it's the second language of Montreal, it's French and English. There's just like a lot of French, the signs are all in French. Um, French is like a pretty big part of just like everyday life here in Montreal, so speaking French is helpful for sure. Um, as far as getting a job goes especially, it's I feel like it's decently hard to get a job in the city without speaking any French just because you really need to know both but you can get jobs around the McGill campus just in English. Rachel asked me what the change in workload was like from high school to college. Oh my god, I did not realize how much effort and studying you have to actually put into every class if you want your marks to be like adequate. Um, I study, I mean, so the classes vary of course, but I study a considerable amount of hours per week like just studying. That doesn't, and studying doesn't include like assignments and essays and things. That's just like reading a textbook, learning the concepts. It's a lot more work than I anticipated for sure. Oh, and then we got some questions about partying and the drinking age, which I mean, I figured as much. Um, someone asked how expensive it is going out. Some clubs don't have cover. Um, some do, like $10 cover sometimes. In the winter, coat check can be like five bucks. Sometimes you have to Uber there, which is like another five bucks if you split it with people. Um, and then alcohol, of course, itself is expensive. You can, like if you, I've def there's definitely been nights where I have drinking my own alcohol, gone to a club, like walked to a club and there's been no cover, and it's been like virtually a free night even though I bought my own alcohol. Then there's other nights where it's really, really cold in the middle of the winter and we like Uber there, buy drinks there because it's cold, and you pay cover and you pay coat check, and it's like a $20 night. So it ranges, but it's definitely an expense that you like have to a lot for that you might not think is gonna be that much. It, it does add up. Um, so people ask the drinking age is fun and the part and what's the party scene like? Of course, it's fun. There's wonderful clubs like all all around Miguel and the drinking age is 18 So it's just a lot of teenagers and it's, it's a good time. It's it's Yeah, it's a good time. Kalia asked how um... Yeah, what's up YouTube? It's your boy. It's your boy What's oh. good? I'm filming a Miguel uh, uh, Do you have my meal? <laughs> Until next time, you two. See you later. See you later. Those are my friends. I'm sure you've seen them before. Khalid's question was, how do I meet people like all my friends here? It was actually way easier than I thought. Knowing no one from my school, my city, my state, my region of the country really coming to McGill was a little intimidating for sure. But the second I got here, I just met so many amazing people, friends, the people in my hallway I'm really close with. And you just meet people by going out, going to all the events, going to like the orientation weeks, like you just, you just make connections and you, you'll like form friend groups, like but there's no way that you won't meet people because everyone's looking to make friends, everyone is being social and you'll find people that are going to be some of the best friends you'll have. The study to party ratio, I mean there's been times where I've gone out Wednesday, Friday, Saturday and studied like a bit, but then like this past two weeks I haven't gone out at all, I've just been cramming for exams, so you can make it what you want. Did I get used to the cold quickly and how is the cold? The cold, it's a little brutal, not gonna lie. Um, there were days where it was negative 30 below and like I couldn't go outside, it was it hurt like my chest to go outside. Um, and sometimes the snow was just so intense that I actually canceled school one day this year just because it was snowing so much. Um, it's a lot, it's a lot of winter, but it's really fun, like, I don't know, I grew up in the snow and then moved out of it when I was in elementary school and so coming back to really snowy places honestly just been a really good time for me and I've actually really enjoyed it even though it is kind of cold. <laughs> Do I think I had a similar experience to my friends who went to American colleges? That's an interesting question. I really don't think I did. I think some of the main features of American universities I do not have here, such as like a big sorority fraternity scene. There's really like none of that. Like we have them, but they're just not really important. Um, roommates. I so love having my own room and I honestly, like I would never, I, I would hate having a roommate. Like I couldn't, I, I wouldn't like that at all. So the fact that all my friends in American schools have roommates is a pretty weird thing for me. Another thing is like a big sports scene, football scene. 
other Canadian universities have that. McGill really doesn't. Like, we have sports, of course, but it's just not a huge deal. There's no, like, everyone's going out to the football game. It's not, like, an identifying factor of my school. What was it like when I got accepted? That was a... Yeah, so I first got, like, waitlisted. Um, and I didn't tell anybody I had got in because I checked my status. I saw that I got waitlisted. So I like didn't tell anyone because I thought I'd be rejected for sure because my I just I knew it was a good school and I I didn't think I could get in. It was my long shot school actually. So I didn't tell anybody. And then the next day my status got changed to accepted pending final results, which basically means accepted as long as you keep your grades up. And I was so excited. I cried because I just I didn't think I could do it. I really didn't think that I would get in. Um how busy is my schedule? How many classes do I have per day on average? Um, classes I don't have uh like this semester for instance I had a conference on Monday and a class on Monday, two classes on Tuesday, two classes on Wednesday, two classes on Thursday, one class on Friday. Around three hours of class every day, except uh, Friday it was just one and a half. Um, and then I would study like before or after those classes. Um, and then I would go to ballet class in the city sometimes on Tuesdays and on Saturdays. So I wasn't, it's not like high school where you go to school all day, but I still put in like more work than I did in high school for sure. But the actual time I'm in class isn't that much, it's only, like, it's only like once or twice a day. Some people have really big schedules with labs, which take up a lot of time, but I'm an art student, so I don't have that. Did I regret being far away from my family? That's a hard one for me because yes and no. I knew that I needed to go see the world, so to speak, and get out of Washington. I knew I needed to be like on the East Coast and do a different thing and explore that side of my personality and that kind of a lifestyle, so I'm really happy I went, but being away from my family is challenging, um, especially when things happen and you wish you could be home and you can't be, it makes it, it makes you feel kind of stuck, because I know if I had gone to school in Seattle, I could just easily drive home and see them if I ever needed to. It's something you have to, like, give up for trying new things and being adventurous and getting yourself out there, but there's certainly moments where that time change is a little too long and I really wish I could just go home for the weekend. A lot of people actually asked about the dining halls and the bathrooms and like running out of money and meal plans, which I didn't think people would be interested in that, but that makes sense. Um, dining halls right there, uh, it's like right and across. You can see it. There's pretty good shots of it in my Week in My Life video. I'll link that below if you want to like see what it looks like. And then the bathrooms are just like in the middle, a shared bathroom in the floor. There's two stalls, like 10 sinks, three showers, and you share it with like 15 people. So it's, they're just like right, right, right outside the door. And then for the meal plan thing and like spending money, you have your meal plan, you have your flex dollars, and you have your one card. One card is for vending machines, laundry, but I think it's just vending machines and laundry, I want to say, and like printing maybe. Um, your mandatory meal plan is like the money at the dining hall, and then your flex dollars are like for cafes on campus and eating on campus. And do I run out of money by, did you run out of money by late December and you run out of money now? So it's each semester you get like more money on your meal plan. Uh, I ran out in December to like right at the very end I was eating like rice every day. But that's just I got too many desserts. It was, I, it was dumb. Um, now I have like a hundred dollars left and I'm only here for four more days so I'm fine. And when you do run out of your meal plan money it will roll over into your flex dollars. So you can, if you have like a lot of flex dollars left and you run out of meal plan, like you can still get meals at the dining hall with your other dollars. Any negative aspects of McGill that you think incoming first years should know about? Um, if you're not prepared for the winter, it might hit you kind of hard. The campus is on a hill, if that's a problem for you. It's like a kind of a, a hilly walk up to a residence. Um, there's a lack of sports stuff. Uh, it's a really, really big school. There's a lot of people, so you might be intimidated by that. Uh, I'm thinking of all the possible negative things that it would have to someone else, even if it's not personally like a con for me. I have been so happy with my university decision, it's hard to think of any negative aspects that people should know about. A lot of your lifestyle will depend on the residence you choose. So if you, I'm in a very social, party, fun residence, that's the life I wanted. If you get put here and you don't really like that lifestyle and you're more studious, you'll probably find it pretty loud, pretty wild, you might not enjoy it, you might not like like the constant like noise on the weekends and things like that but in, in that case you could switch residences and I made a video about residences as well 
if you want to check that out. So the video is really what you make it, and the negative aspects are like pretty well advertised. Like we know it's in Montreal, we know it's a crazy winter, you know it's a big school. So I just, if you think you're gonna love it, like you probably will. Could I explain how it is being an American studying in Canada? That's I wish that someone had explained it to me a little bit better because it's a lot more complicated than I thought it would be. It's challenging to have to like have a different phone plan, a different credit card, different insurance because my mom can't like transfer me money if I ever need it. Just like mail me a check across the continent and then I can deposit it into my Canadian account. Like for example, it makes it kind of challenging. You can't just like it's not the same like internet service. Like I have to be on a Canadian plan. Like it's expenses that I didn't really think about. So in that sense, being an American is kind of challenging, but that's the same for any international student. I think Americans have it the easiest because the culture is so similar. Whereas like people coming from uh, like Asia, Europe, everywhere around the world, that's like more of a culture shock. It's like more of an actual like huge shift. I mean, I'm still in North America. I'm surrounded by English speakers, a lot of Americans, a lot of Canadians, like we're all really one and the same. Are there club fairs and career fairs to help students get involved? Yes, 100%. Can you make friends if you don't really party party? Yes, of course you can. I, again, just people you live by, like you'll make friends. I, that was my biggest worry going in is like, I'm not gonna make any friends. I'm gonna have no one, I don't know anyone. And like all of my worries just like evaporated when I got here. So truly coming from someone that knew no one, no one at all in this entire province, I made so many friends. It's not like friends, friends will come, friends will come for sure. Okay, so someone asked me, a couple of questions. What made me choose McGill? I wanted to do something different. Um, I didn't want to stay in Washington like a lot of my friends, pretty much all my friends were going to Washington or California. I knew that it was like I was gonna go on a different path. I always kind of thought East Coast, um, but then I was thinking France, maybe Europe, and then I kind of like remembered Montreal existed and it was just this wonderful city that's a combination of everything. So I really I really chose McGill by the city, not necessarily the school. Would I recommend joining a sorority? I'm not the right person to ask because I'm going to say no. Um, but if you really want to, like you can. I'm not holding you back. I just, it doesn't really add to your, the social scene in my opinion. What's the diversity in terms of culture? This is a really, really diverse school. We have literally probably like 50 countries represented. I feel like maybe even more. Oh, Frosh. People are asking about Frosh. Frosh is McGill's orientation week at the beginning of the year. It is really, really, really fun. You do your Frosh based on your faculty, so I was an arts Frosh. So it's essentially three or four days, I believe. You're like kind of put in this group at the beginning on the first day, like just randomly. That's actually how I made a lot of my friends. Um, and it's just like four days of like partying, seeing the city, like bonding with your friends. Like you, we go on like, there's a, like a boat cruise one day that's just like really, really fun. It like sails across the river. There's like music and dancing, of course. Um, there's like free alcohol pretty much the whole time. We go to concerts, went to the park on like a bar crawl of Montreal, down to Old Port for beach day, which was so much fun. Like it's a really wonderful experience because it's still hot, it's in sunny in summer, and you're just literally have no responsibilities and you're in this new city and it's like the first week of college and you're just like off having an amazing time. I think this will be the last question that I answer. Someone asked me about my program that I am in, and I am an International Development Studies and Art History major, which is art history is art history, and International Development Studies is kind of like international relations at U.S. schools. It's like a mixed faculty major. I take classes in like poli-sci, history, economics, and it's a variety of kind of like development-based, political science-esque classes. Um, I really, really enjoy it. I guess we have to take a lot of different classes from a lot of different subjects, all towards like one degree. And they're all topics that I'm really interested in and really enjoy learning about. And then art history is, I have a very special place in my heart for it. I really just love art and history. So it really makes a lot of sense for me. And I'm also really loving that major. I love the classes that I take. And then um, communication studies in my minor, but it's like I just kind of have it because it pairs nicely with art history and the other one. I'm not like incredibly passionate about communications. I think it's kind of a kind of a basic degree in my opinion. Um, I hope this Q&A was helpful. I hope I was able to answer um, some of the questions that you might have been having about McGill and my first year experience. And actually tomorrow I'm going to pack up my room and 
it's like my last couple days here in residence and here in Montreal until next year. So it's been a really good one and I hope my answers help you out a little bit. Thank you.